failure. Yeah, failure. You're a failure. Those are painful words, aren't they? Really painful words. And the feelings and the reality is even more fearful and even more terrible. We don't want to fail. Of all the great fears that we have, fear of failure is really one of the top ones right up there. It really gets to us. And so many things have been left undone and so many challenges not met because people were just afraid. They were afraid they were going to fail. And the fear of failure leads to many other things. But what are we going to do about it? Because if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to live a fully alive life, let me tell you something. You're going to fail. And you might fail a lot. So today on this uh, Friday evening going into the weekend, I'd like to invite you to go into a little deep learning and some deep thoughts with a friend of mine. His name is Tim. He's written a book called Risking, and he's going to help you deal. In fact, get ready to not only endure, but embrace and be more than a conqueror through failure. That's what we're going to do. Today, this weekend on The Jesus Entrepreneur. <music> Greetings once again, this is Stan Houston for the Christian Entrepreneur Network and our program is The Jesus Entrepreneur. Helping you to build a life, build a business, and build a brand to make a difference in your life, business, and branding, and to make a, a Jesus entrepreneur difference in your world and perhaps even the world. And we're glad that you can join us. Uh, the Christian Entrepreneur Network at tcentrepreneur.org is where we come from. And a 20 minute podcast, 20 minute Personal On Demand Radio is what we normally do, but we're going to do a little deep learning. So this is going to be a little bit longer because we're going to challenge you to today learn one of the most vital things that you need to know and prepare yourself for and get ready to be a more than conqueror as a Christian entrepreneur. So may I get right to it. My friend's name is Tim, Tim Hare, and he recently wrote a, a little article in the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics, and what it's about is just that. Tim, speaking from experience and from a longtime coach, friend, and investor from many others, will tell you a little bit about failure. Let's get right to it right now. Some thoughts on failure from Tim Hare. When you decide to take a risk, it's not unusual for a happy ending scenario to unfold in your mind. A bold decision to finally pursue a dream followed by many months or years of hard work and finally a successful outcome. Ah, the risk was worth it. The difficult truth is that you may or may not be rewarded in the end as you expected. The outcome of risking is not guaranteed. You can take all of the necessary steps, do the work, even do all the right things, and still not achieve the outcome you hoped for. You may fail in the process of taking a risk. Contrary to what we might want to believe and what we might envision, risk does not always mean reward, at least in the way we might expect. Inherent in the definition of risk is the possibility of a variety of outcomes, some of which may be less than desirable, and failure is one of those options. And it's hard to talk about failure. American culture does not like failure, nor does it make uh, examining failure and talk about it easy to do. To admit that we have failed at something typically brings shame and discomfort. Upon being asked how we are, it is uncommon or even unwelcome to say anything other than, well, fine, and how are you? We are afraid to reveal the real nature of the challenges facing us and the internal emotional struggle we may be going through in confronting these difficulties. In our self-talk, 
A setback or failure is an admission that we don't have our act together, that we may have missed it, that we are less than truly successful. Hence our desire to project something to others that is not really representative of what we're going through. If you look at social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, they often project a rather rosy story, a picture of success and positivity. We like to put our best selves forward in order to portray successful and fulfilling lives. It doesn't matter that our personal lives might be upside down or that our house is a mess or that the kids were screaming five seconds ago. We're probably inclined to put up that photo of the kids smiling like angels or of us standing in shorts well tanned on the deck of the cruise ship. It sure would be interesting if instead of posting the highlights of our days, we posted the reality of our days and revealed more of our authentic selves. I'm willing to bet that our friends and virtual followers would relate to and even enjoy our normalcy over a problem-free front. You see, it's okay to take a risk and fail. It is okay to take a risk and to fail in doing so. It's even necessary to fail in some situations. If you drill deeply enough into their stories, the most successful and powerful leaders in nearly every domain owe their success to having faced meaningful adversity, challenge, and failure along the way. Though I don't like failure any more than the next person, what I know is that you will learn in the middle of it, and if you will allow it, you will be changed. In fact, failure will be one of the best teachers of life lessons that you will have. The poignant moments that I experienced doing uh, and during two very difficult, failure-filled years of starting my own consulting firm, Life Vision Inc. in 1998 and 1999 are still with me today. And some of the lessons I learned include why it is crucial to focus on what a client really needs as opposed to what I want to deliver to them. How not to underestimate the competitive nature of the marketplace. Why it is important to keep short accounts of those who have offended or wronged me. And quite frankly, how some things are really are out of my control. There's a reason why Jesus encouraged his followers with these words found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. The message translation goes this way. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me, and I'll show you how. As you embrace difficulty, you'll discover a profound teaching moment in the middle of it. God's very presence in that trouble and circumstance will strengthen, and it will encourage you, and better prepare you for future challenges. If I've learned anything about risking it, and failing in the last 20 years. It is this. God is present with you in the failure. He is for you, not against you. His grace is sufficient for you, and He wants to show His favor to you. The failure you experience is always an opportunity, a stepping stone to where God wants to bring you. Even in the gravest challenge and the deepest unknown territory, this is powerful. This is refreshing and a life-giving truth. So, keep stepping out, keep taking risks, keep pressing forward, even though the outcome of risking, it is not guaranteed. Just some things for your thought and consideration from Tim Hare. Well, Tim, Tim Hare of Sarah Ventures, Uh, I oftentimes say, if it's important, it needs to be heard. Well, you've been well read around the world in this little article, so we tried to make it heard. Uh, What's it like to hear your words come right back to you? Uh, It's funny you should say that, because uh, the morning they posted or reposted the article, 
uh, on the Institute for Faith, Work, and Economics uh, website, I had uh, actually been struggling with a, a sort of imminent failure, imminent challenging situation. So, the, you know, the very first thing uh, I got to see that morning were my own words uh, uh, <laughs> talking back at me about uh, about failure and challenge and the need to uh, embrace it and learn something from it. So it was a sort of a peculiar uh, set of circumstances, I might say. Well, you know, the interesting thing that you mentioned that, Tim, is I had read that before. That's kind of how we met. And then I saw it come up again, and I read it again, and I was kind of having a little bit of that same experience. Mm. Uh, you know, and uh, and just before I turned this uh, on today, one of my colleagues blogged, and the title of his article was, Is it Failure or the Fear of Failure? Which is Worse? Mm -hmm. And so that came in. Well, Tim, um, I'd like to just let you talk about it. Uh, you've read this. You've lived it. You've uh, read it again. You've said it again. It's one of the key lessons in the life that you teach people, particularly those in the investing world. The entrepreneurial world is full of failure as well as hopefully some success. Um, tell us some of your personal thoughts now about some highlights from the article that uh, uh, are very personal to you, not just uh, research and not just uh, thoughtful, but personal to Tim. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the first thing uh, I would say is it, it never gets particularly easy to go through failure or to talk about failure um, e even for those of us that write about it and uh, and sort of probe it and try to understand it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, in the article, I reflected upon a, a, a more distant failure in my past uh, that had to do with uh, starting a consulting company called Life Vision after I'd spent 15 years, about 15 years in public accounting, uh, many of those as a partner level individual in the firm. And, and it was a very, very painful experience of uh, starting a company and essentially uh, failing at it and uh, and yet that was the distant past and as I shared with you that you know the morning of I was much more in tune with uh, some current failures and challenges that I'm dealing with I, I run a venture fund and one of the things I do in, in that capacity is to raise money from investors to bring into our fund uh, to invest in companies, and uh, I've been working on a on on one of our what we call a sidecar fund now for oh probably about a year, and uh, have contacted uh, several hundred potential investors, and ended up with a list, you know, of of maybe ten or fifteen parties that have made a commitment, which which is a pretty massive uh, failure rate, you know, if you do the, if you do the math. Um, <laughs> That I won't and, put you in the big leagues, would it? <laughs> no. You know, that and uh, uh, I'm also working on a, on a project that's a little bit out of my uh, bailiwick. I'm, I'm helping uh, a group put together a real estate deal, which is it's really sort of outside uh, my domain of expertise. And I sort of naively thought uh, that uh, perhaps it would uh, come together much more quickly and easily than my work in venture capital, which is higher risk and, and so forth. So I thought real estate, you know, might be uh, more more understandable and so forth. And yet, I've, I've also experienced, a, you know, a fair degree of, I, mean, I, I don't know if it's outright failure, but it's uh, certainly much, much uh, less uh, glowing results from a, about a six or seven month process on that project. So both of these are kind of going on simultaneously and, and so I'm very uh, very much in touch with them and uh, I've just been praying actually that, that scripture that I talk about yes. uh, in, the, in the post where, where you know, Jesus uh, very explicitly says, don't run from suffering, uh, embrace it, follow me and I'll show you how. Um, I think that's, that's the main thing I want to convey today is that that is precisely the opposite uh, advice you would get from any number of uh, non-Christ uh, following uh, pontificators or, or consultants or coaches, right? Uh, don't run from suffering. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, 
too many other uh, uh, folks would say that, uh, 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 and yet there it is, uh, staring us in the face in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. Um, how do we do that? How do we embrace it? How do we find Jesus in the middle uh, of the failure experience so that we can um, learn something from it and, and, that, and, and that we can be assured that in the middle of it, uh, he still loves us and he is for us and he is not against us and that ultimately uh, the situation can work out for our good. You know, that's very interesting. You know, again, we, we kindred spirits resonate to that and many people listening will too. You know, well, we can endure suffering, but you say embrace it. Right. That's, that's a different a, that's deal. That's a completely different level, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's a different level completely. You know, I mean, that's that's so. And you know, the the fact that, uh, as one of my uh, mentors said, that uh, you know, the ultimate temptation. We're talking about you know the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. What he said is the ultimate temptation. The mentor is, is the temptation to believe that God doesn't care about you anymore. <laughs> that's the temptation. And, and, uh, I, think I think it's human nature to sort of go there, right? We, yeah. <clears throat> we, we, we doubt God. We, uh, we doubt the very uh, fundamental truth that, that he is good and he is for us. And I, I think that's, you know, that, that's what the, uh, the deceiver wants us to believe because in that spot, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we abandon really the, you know, sort of one of the ultimate uh, fundamental truths of the universe, and uh, and when we decouple ourselves from that, you know, then we're we're sort of in uh, pretty dangerous uh, territory. Well, that and that came to me yesterday again. We talked about things that happen when we're on the subject. You know, when you're talking about failure, I was going through a project, and one of my uh, mentors confronted me that this is not going right, and we have to change how we're going to do this. And uh, obviously, he heard a little bit of my discouragement, and he said, "Stan." Let me assure you, God is not picking on you. <laughs> right. No, that's that's precisely right. And there, you know, God often has a different agenda and different timing, sometimes both uh, at the same time than uh, than we do. Uh, so, you know, it, it's uh, that that can make it uh, uh, somewhat painful and uh, com- complicated to to figure out. Um, so, uh, ab- absolutely. Well, just to, you know, and again, I would really encourage people. Uh, the reason we put this on, and one of my mentors a long time ago who oftentimes taught me about the power of uh, taking something that was important to you, something you had learned, and, and what he actually said is, this is where I kind of learned it, Tim, is he said, if, if you read something that strikes your heart and mind, and this is back in the old cassette days, all right? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, he said, uh, Take out your cassette player and uh, find that article and just uh, record it yourself in your own words, you know, and maybe you make a comment or two. And he said, then take that cassette and you take it with you in the car and as you're driving to your appointments, as your uh, thing, just listen to that again. And he said, listen to it uh, seven times and you don't even have to be listening to it. Just have it in your presence. You'll be uh, surprised at what God and the Spirit does, just the words around you. You'll pick up more of it. And so I would encourage people is, this is one of those seven minutes that we gave you today from Tim, is pick it out and keep it handy. Go back and listen to it again. Just listen to it again, because uh, it's rich not only in nuance, but in depth of understanding, and it will convict and challenge you to think differently you know the old steve jobs line think differently but uh, we're thinking the the jesus line not steve jobs the jesus line he says i want you to think differently about where i'm leading you and what's happening to you and in the words of my good friend tim and we've both been there <laughs> embrace <laughs> failure there we go. Yeah, embrace it. Find Jesus in the middle of it. Uh, certainly, He's there, and He's trying to reveal some new aspect of Himself uh, to you. Uh, that's that's probably the most profound thing. Is uh, and again, it may be completely different than we expect. It might be um, even completely decoupled yeah. from the particular thing we're going through. He's He's wanting to reveal 
uh, some new aspect of his nature and and his love for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then secondarily, of course, you do want to ask yourself, you know, what what can I learn from it? Uh, obviously, failure's a great teacher if we'll take the time to examine uh, the circumstances that that have caused it. You know, you know that, that that's it's important yeah. to do. Uh, and yet, you know, sometimes we we don't want to take the time and effort to to explore it. Right. And, um, you know, I have a good friend. Uh, he's a fine Christian brother. Um, but I, I have to say, you know, as much as I love him, is he really plays life very, very close and very, very safe. He just mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, he's basically put himself in positions where there's been very little failure in his life. Uh, and in some ways, it shows. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I think, uh, you know, really ultimately the life of faith is one of uh, taking some risk uh, on a day-to-day basis. And, some, you know, sometimes those risks are small. Sometimes they're medium-sized. Sometimes, you know, they're, they're quite large. They're, they're a job change or a cross-country move or something right. of that nature. But uh, really ultimately, you know, faith is spelled R-I-S-K. That's, uh, okay, say that again. <laughs> That's a Tim Hare yeah. special signature yeah. line. Uh, Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You know, it, it is about stepping outside of our comfort zone to initiate some type of action for which the ultimate outcome is not guaranteed. That That is what it means to, to walk in faith. And uh, that's ultimately, you know, how we how we grow in in uh, in Christ, and uh, how we ultimately, you know, uh, achieve what what He has for us to achieve. Very good, Tim. You've got deals to do. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Obviously, you're one of our favorite teachers, so we will invite you to come back again and tell us about investing and about pitching, and most important. Uh, how to Live by Faith, and his book is called Risking. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and uh, you would enjoy the story. It's not just a, a fable table. It's one of those stories of personal work and worry and uh, occasionally a victory. So, uh, Tim, we appreciate your book. We appreciate your article. We appreciate your presence. May God be with you. We, as we go into the second quarter, May we live long and prosper and see that vision, but it won't happen unless we take a few risks in quarter number two. Thanks, Tim. You bet. All the best and blessings to you. This has been Tim Hare of Sarah Ventures on, uh, hey, what do we do with failure? This is something coming your way from the Jesus Entrepreneur. All the best and blessings. We'll be back in just a bit. Thanks again for joining us on the Christian Entrepreneur Network, our program, The Jesus Entrepreneur. And we go, of course, into the uh, WR2W days, the weekend, a little bit of work, rest, reflection, relaxation, and worship. That's the agenda for the next few days. I hope you'll take advantage of those opportunities to do that. I'd love to hear from you. This network is growing and you are invited to join us. Lots of questions, lots of things that we can help you with. We would enjoy the privilege of working with you, coaching you, and helping you build your business every day you join us whenever we're on, and that's most of the time, but not every day. We'll be right here on the Christian Entrepreneur Network, the Jesus Entrepreneur. My name is Stan, Stan Houston. I'm the lead broadcaster and the co-founder of the network. You can reach me at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you. Till next time, next week, all the best and blessings, and bye for now. Thank you.